Hello, internet. It is me, Sergeant Hamster, aka Who the Fuck Cares. And today I wanted to bring up some points about Battlefield 5 that I haven't seen anyone else on YouTube bring up or really talk about very much. Uh, I mean, that could just be, I spend a fair amount of time on YouTube, but it could just be that I haven't found it, you know, those smaller YouTube channels that are talking about it or the bigger ones, but I, uh, I, there's some, there's some issues about this game that I want to talk about because I haven't heard anyone else talk about it. Now, I want to start off by saying we're not going to talk about gameplay today. Um, we're going to just talk about the state of the game from everywhere, but a gameplay perspective and I'm also not going to give my two cents on Firestorm although that is a hot topic as well uh, but let's go ahead and start off let's go ahead and take a look at my company now the first thing I want to note is that there are allied forces and Axis forces and yet in the game it is always Britain versus Germany. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but a world war implies that there are more than two factions fighting. Granted, you can umbrella them in allied or Axis, but I definitely notice the lack of Russia, the lack of America, the lack of Japan, also Italy. Those factions being absent from the game is is a real damper for me uh it takes some of the immersion away and it also makes the game get way more stale much more quickly uh so and but it, it's funny because even if we look at you know we have the if, if we look at these weapons here right so sub sadler well i don't see any italian weapons on here but this is kind of goes to show that there are no Italian weapons. There are no, uh, there, there's no PPSH. There's no Russian weapons. I, I don't see a Mosin Nagant uh, with the snipers at all. You know, how, how can this be a considered like a World War game with no, with no Mosin Nagant? You know what I'm saying? Like, how can this... How can it not be in this game? It it, it frustrates me because it, it just it gets old. Like, you know, sure, I love playing as playing with the iconic, you know, German uh, uh, MP40, right? Well, I'll use using the MP28 here, but the iconic MP40, right? I already max level out this thing because it was it's it's just so iconic. I had to use it. Same thing with the SCG44. But even on that same note, even if we go over to Allied Forces, if, where the hell is the M1 Garand? I am legit salty that this game does not have the M1 Garand in it. The closest thing is the Turner SMLE, which pales in comparison to the real M1 Garand. They included the M1A1 Carbine, and of course they had the Gear 43. But they left out the M1 Garand, and it's still... They've, they've put in these two weapons here before the M1 Garand. Like, it just... It boggles my mind how the decisions that DICE and EA have made in terms of, in terms of weapon selection in this very historic, iconic era. They, they leave out half, the, half of the notable factions in the war themselves, leave out most of the weapons with those factions like see m1a1 carbine sure the british had it in the lend lease act but that was because it was an american weapon that we gave to them i say we as americans uh but there's so i mean it's still an american weapon in this game but there's just where the hell is the m1 garand that's a whole point that's like this you know i i like i really like this game and i'm gonna go into a few more reasons why but the the lack of of representation not of you know women you know that's not the kind of representation i'm talking about you know uh you can get get into all the all the stuff about you know there being 
there not being women soldiers or whatever, you know, like I'm fine with compromising some historical accuracy for, for customization. I, I'm really okay with that. But to leave out such I, such important factions and their and their uh, specific weapons is just a a missed missed opportunity. Uh, and I really hope that they bring in more stuff there. Um, so moving on from the missing factions and the missing weapons, and along those same lines, if we continue with the company, something that I wasn't quite sure about uh, was uh, was like weapon customizations and having all of these camos. This is a bad uh, example. Let me do one that I've that I spent a lot of time with. Uh, uh, actually, you know what? We'll go to my Axis support because I've not the FG, but the MG34. I've decked this thing out. I've spent a lot of time with this. Support is one of my favorite classes. I love MMGs, setting up a bipod. But man, I made this thing, I really, I've decked it out so far. I mean, of course there's other stuff I've gotten to unlock it too. And honestly, this isn't even really my favorite way to set it up. But the, the point is, is that there's a lot of customization options uh, with these weapons. And yeah, you know, some of them are kind of weird and you, you know, the, they, they might take you out of the immersion a little bit. But honestly, I, I like it and, and here's why. It's not the customization itself that I'm okay with. I'm okay with it because it's specifically tied to assignments. Now assignments are, oh my god, they are a breath of fresh air, I will tell you. Because back in when I first was playing shooters, and I was, you know, played Modern Warfare 2, you know, you had challenges, right? Get 250 headshots, you know, to get, to get the fall camo, I think it was back in the day. I loved doing those challenges, and I just liked getting the skins, and you know, and every time you see someone with a, that skin, you'd be like, oh shit, this guy's good at what, with that weapon, he's, and he spent a lot of time with it because he has that camo. But since microtransactions have become such a popular uh, tool for, for these AAA titles to use, they, they, they got rid of challenges, so you couldn't grind them and you had to buy them. Battlefield 5, however, has all these challenges, and when I was first playing the game, you know, they only had, like, maybe 10 challenges. It was very small, um, and I was doing mostly just the weapon assignments and trying to complete those. Uh, but I really, I really like the special assignments in this game. It is an element that I, that I accept with open arms. Take this Assault Mastery 3, right? Complete anyone. Kill 10 enemies in one life. That's pretty easy. Uh, and that's the difficulty of some of these assignments, you know, varies. Um, one of the ones that I haven't done yet that I know is going to be hard, but I'd like to, is the Hunter's Challenge, right? Where you got to get headshots, kill melee enemies, and kill with sidearms while attacking. Like, this one is, is rather difficult. Um, and uh, But it's only worth 400 company coined, while some of these other ones are easier to complete and worth the same coins. So I wish they kind of fine-tune these assignments in terms of how many coins you get for the difficulty of it, and I kind of wish they had like a, t like a system of difficulty. Um, but see, like, you get... Let's, let's just take a look at this one very close, more closely. You get two uh, customization op options for your character for just, for just killing ten enemies in one life. I, I love the fact that I can unlock it through a grind, but not even just grinding it out, you know, trying to get the company coin, just buying the company coin, but actually changing up the way you play the game, forcing you, or encouraging you, really, encouraging you to play the game in a different way. You know, this, this is encouraging you to play Salt. I love that. I love that the game rewards you for picking up different play styles and giving it a try. Oh, I, I adore that. I adore that I don't have to spend any real-world money in order to get cool shit. And I mean, some of these custom customization options are very cool. Uh, one of my favorite ones that I have decked out right now is on the Allied. It's got to be my, my Medic class. I, I absolutely love the way that my Medic looks right now. Uh, I wish it would load up so you guys could really see it more in detail, but 
if you if you've played Battlefield 5, you you kind of know what what it all looks like. And but yes, I I actually really like the customization options for all of these for for everything. I like that you can do it through assignments or you could do it through company coin and grinding it, say say if a challenge is too hard. I really like that. It's an element of this game that I find very appealing uh, and not anti-consumer. It's like, yes, there are microtransactions in this game and you can, you know, I suppose speed grind through it by paying real money in order to get the cooler shit. Uh, and I'm also okay with, um, with this recent uh, uh, re uh, character changes that re that can only require world real world money, um, U.S. dollars. Like, I I'm a bit adverse to it because I just don't like the idea of of having paid a full price for this game. I I didn't pay full price for this game. I got it a little after. It came out uh, because I heard such horrible things about it, but it has gotten much better since. Um, but I'm more okay with this because a it's purely cosmetic. Uh, I do wish I could grind for it rather than just having to spend real world money. Um, that that's something that I don't like, but I'm willing to forgive uh, because it because it's such a it's a small part of the game. Uh, it's not it's not a hefty part that you're missing out if you if you can't afford it or you just don't want to spend the money on it um, But I'm really happy with the customization of this game I I was I was you know when I saw the the trailer for it god I hated the trailer for this game and there was so much that Went wrong in the marketing and lead up to this game as well as the launch the day one the day one launch was was not great by any stretch of the imagination uh, and this game is by no means perfect but there are elements to this game like the assignments and the customization options that I actually found very favorable in this game uh, like I said uh, having to having challenges to unlock attachment or not attachments but uh customization options has been damn near eliminated and replaced with micro force microtransactions uh i'm not a fan of that so i i am i like playing this game because of the challenges the challenges these special assignments are really half of the reason i play this game I like I like the, the the satisfaction of unlocking new things. Uh, it's great, and and it, and it applies even over to vehicles. Even though I I rarely ever spend any time in vehicles, to be quite honest. Um, that's just not really my play style. I love using you know these uh, these uh, what, MMGs and LMGs. Uh, but yeah, so that, that's some things about Battlefield 5 that I really like that I don't think many people have, have talked about uh, on YouTube. Um, I think these are great. I actually like that mint a lot. It's kind of a big bulky one though. You know, and sure, it might break the immersion because you got this fucking gold-plated muzzle here, but I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, so... Moving on, for, uh, or it's it's relative to customization, but it's a different element of it, and that's talking talking back up to the lead up of this game. Watching the trailer for this game, like I said, I hated it. It didn't. It was just I didn't know what to expect from this game. Quite honestly, I when I had heard that they were making Battlefield Five, they were going for like a realistic, you know, more like. Like, what I suppose Call of Duty World War II was supposed to be. And don't even get me started on Call of Duty World War II. Oh my god. It might be in a better state today than it was when it initially launched. But I played that game for about a week. Uh, I even made it that long. And then just never... I, tr I actually traded it for Overwatch. Like, I, I just could... I, I didn't like the game at all. Um, but I wanted that, that boots-on-the-ground experience that Call of Duty promised... And this game initially was going for, uh, but but then like it got PC, and I really think political correctness did a number on this game. Uh, and I'm not talking about 
that there are women characters that you can play as. Which, by the way, like, any time that I'm in combat, I only hear women screaming. Like, that's it. I don't ever hear guys, like, screaming and dying and calling for help. I only hear the women. So, I mean, <laughs> that's a little immersive breaking, uh, but it's not by any stretch of the imagination, uh, a, like, a negative point in the game. Um... <clears throat> Uh, where was I? Right, so they were making the game more realistic, and I see elements of that, like with the crouch sprinting uh, and the fortification building, with with building trenches and, uh, and those elements in the game like that. I really like that. But then it seemed like they were going one way with it, and then halfway, they went another direction. Like, the, the political correctness sort of, like, took over, and the customization, like... The, the monetization of customization, there's a lot of jeunes in there, kind of took over the, the realism factor of it. So it's like, this game has like a weird blend of like realism and uniqueness to the Second World War that is juxtaposed with things like female characters in the game and, and all of these sort of like crazier customization options. Um, uh, I say crazier, more outlandish, I suppose, is a good way to put it. Um, so, this game is, is weird like that. It has really good elements that make it more realistic, like diving backwards and looking like uh, 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 a dead body in the streets and, 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 uh, and, and the crouch sprinting. Those, those really make it World War II to me. Like, they, it really distinguishes it amongst other battlefields and other World War II games. But then it's juxtaposed to that, to the outlandish customization and, and the, the female characters and stuff. So it's, it's a weird amalgamation. Uh, also, another thing about... I'm still pissed off about the M1 Garen not being... They have the Tommy gun! They have this thing! And no M1 Garand. What? Why? Why? Why is that? Give me the M1 Garand and I will stop complaining about it. Jesus. Ugh. But no, those are, those are some elements of Battlefield 5 that I think are really noteworthy that I haven't heard other people talk about. Um, we didn't talk about gameplay today uh, other than it, that it gets stale. Uh, it gets stale because... Um, uh, there are the the map. There's really not a whole lot of map selection. Uh, the the absence of the other factions, including the locations of those factions. I want to fight in. I want to fight on the in the jungles of the Pacific. You know, I want to fight on in the the frozen wastes of of Russia. I want to fight. I I, I want to fight. Well, those would be two places. Maybe even Italy. I'd like to fight in Italy. You know, there's and those elements are in World War One, which is just mind-boggling to me that they are completely absent to this game. Uh, I don't know this. There are certain things to this game that I really like, and certain things to this game that I really don't like. Uh, and and the decision making for for why the th the things that are in are in and the things that are not in are not in. I, I could not explain to you at all. Uh, but overall, I really like Battlefield Five. It's, it's a fun game. It's got refreshing pro-consumer business practices with the assignments and the customization options, um, as, as well as uh, the gameplay itself is fun. It's given me the Battlefield experience that I've always liked. Um, uh, with, with the combination of, of vehicles and, and, and infantry, uh, and, and, you know, the game of conquest. I love, uh, breakthrough, which is like rush, but, you know, with capturing points instead of destroying objectives, although I want rush to come back. Uh, I've seen a bit of talk about, um, you know, Battlefield losing its roots with game with game modes like grind coming out, and as long 
I, as long as the you know the K mode of conquest is still in the game and it's more and it's one of the more popular things, I don't think that the the appearance of grind and, and those type of game modes reveal that uh, that Battlefield has lost its roots. I, w I wouldn't agree with that. Uh, I think Battlefield is still Battlefield. This Battlefield is is like any any other Battlefield that's come before. Um, it's a, it's a good, fun World War II experience, um, but there are certain elements to it that don't quite make sense, and I'm not sure why they're in the game. But that is my two cents on some of the game elements of Battlefield V. If you haven't been playing Battlefield V, I recommend picking it up and playing it. If you like World War II, you'll like this. Uh, I've always been a World War II buff. Um, and I'll give you some more gameplay as I try to complete some wacky assignments with frag rifles and uh, MMGs and all that good stuff. I'll give you some more content coming up. But uh, until then, signing off, Sergeant Hamster. Uh, I'll catch you guys later.